Hi guys, this is Chris from Noctography.co.uk. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make and use light stencils. When I first started light stenciling, I didn't really know what it was about. I just saw something and wanted to try it. So back then there was no tutorials or anything, so I set out to, to achieve something. I originally started off by writing something on a piece of cardboard, cutting it out and trying to shine a light through it in my exposure. It just didn't work at all. I then figured out that you had to put a piece of paper over the back of it, then try it. Again, it didn't really work. It was then I came to the realisation that I'd have to house the light within some form of box. That was when I got the shoebox idea. But I was still cutting out things with pieces of paper on them and it wasn't very neat. But it was a starting point. This technique that I'm sharing with you today is actually from Trevor Williams. He's done some great light stencils. And I'd like to thank him for sharing the technique with me, who I can share with you. So thanks Trevor. Okay, so first I'm going to show you how to make the image for your light stencil. I've chose this banner here from my website, and it's quite narrow, so first thing we need to do is make it to the size of an A4 piece of paper. That way it's going to fill our whole paper, and there's going to be no white overspill. Now it's important to have a black background because that's the bit we don't see. So we'll see all this noctography.co.uk here and all the black will not be seen at all. So you can use any image in the world as long as there is a black background. You can use as many colours as you want in the image but you might have to adapt it so the background is black. Because if there was a white background what we'd see here is the light writing and then a big white square around it and unless that's the desired effect you want it's best to stick with black okay so we're just in the print preview here and one thing to look out for make sure your image doesn't come too close to the edge of the black because if it overlaps your cardboard you're going to be losing out on a bit of your stencil it's best to experiment with papers to find out what works best for you and your printer and what ink you're using I would suggest putting your printer on its highest print setting though as not to get any banding Banding would leave white gaps which the light will shine through and ruin your stencil. Okay, so now all I have to do is press print and wait for the images to come out. Okay, and there are our two images. Okay, so now we've got our two images, we just need to check, see if there's any banding or any white that's come through, which there isn't. If you've experienced banding, it might be that you've got low ink or you need to clean your print heads. Do this and try it again so you get a perfect matte black finish. Okay, so now we have to line the images up. Now, if you've got a good printer, this shouldn't really matter. You can either use a window, your light bulb in the ceiling, and here I'm using a light box. Now, you check that the images are perfectly aligned up, and once they are, just put a small piece of tape on the top and another one on the bottom just to secure it while it's in the laminator because you don't want it shifting out of place while it's being laminated because that is the point of no return literally okay and there's our image just stuck together right here's one that I laminated earlier although laminating is not essential it does help to protect your images whereas if you just use paper over time it would get tatty and you'd have to throw it away and print off some more. This way you can reuse them forever. Laminating is not expensive at all. You can either pay a company to do it for you for very cheaply or I think I bought this one for about £10. They come free with the little plastic sleeves. Basically you just put your two images into the plastic sleeve, you stick it in, it takes about 30 seconds and it comes out the other side looking like this. Okay, if you want to do this the quick way, just to see how it will work out, you can do it as cheaply and easily with a shoebox. You pop a hole in the front for your stencil, and you pop a hole in the back for your flash gun. And then you would literally just tape your stencil onto the front, put your flash gun into the back, and there you will have a quick mock-up of what your stencil would look like. And that takes about two minutes. Other than that, I'll show you how to make one of these, which takes a bit more time, but it's far more durable and again will last you quite long and the effects are slightly better than with the cardboard box. 
Okay, so we've got our box and now we just need to cut it into shape. Now the reason I'm using a whole box instead of cutting out segments is because the overall product ends out a lot stronger. So. Right, so at this stage, your box should look like this. Sort of a bit like a star, if you like. Basically, once it's at this point, you then fold all the edges into one another, and what you get is a sort of large soft box. Basically, when the light travels through this, it spreads evenly, and then when it hits the stencil, it doesn't. It's not overpowered. Doesn't flare up in any way. So once we're at this point, we then need to duct tape all the edges all the way around, make it black as possible. No light coming through at all. And then once you're done, you will have something that looks a bit like this. Now, I've added a handle, I've added a few little flaps. This basically saves me from having to tape my stencil on the front. So I can just literally push it down into the flaps. Once it's in there, I can just push my remaining flap down and stop any light getting out and that's it. I'll see you outside later on to show you how to use it. Hi guys, so we, we've done all our preparation. We've got our light stencil with whatever picture you decided, your flash gun and an appropriate background. Here we've got an old aeroplane on top of a shipping container. So we're going to get going. Okay, so you find a nice composition that you're happy with. You've got your light stencil and your flash gun. I've got the Canon 580EX. I'm going to have it on 1 8 and you literally, in this case, I want it right in the bottom of the frame as a sort of watermark. So you sort of aim it at the camera, pop one flash, and then let the rest of the image expose and see how it comes out. If you're not happy with it, change your exposure, change your composition, or change where your light stencil is. Now just remember that you may have to focus on the stencil and then do in-camera focusing while the exposure is taking place to focus for the background as well. Or you're going to get out of focus background or out of focus stencil. One thing to remember with your light stencils is you might be tempted to do them far away from the camera but you just won't see them because of how the image is constructed so the best place to do them is within about a metre or two of your camera to get the best, the best view, the best detail and the best lighting source. Okay, so I've just set my camera off, got my flash, put it in, align, flash the stencil, come round to the back of my camera, and as you'll see, I'm changing my focus, focus on the aeroplane, and then you basically just leave the sky and the foreground to burn in, and you should have a beautiful image at the end of it. Okay, as we can see from that image, I had the light stencil quite low. And because there's so much light pollution here, it didn't show up very well. So now I'm going to try it again, but I'm going to try it in the sky so it'll show up. Okay, so I've just set my camera off on a, another exposure. Still got my flash on 1 8th. Lift your stencil into the air. One flash. Change your focus for the background in the sky. Let it burn in. And then turn your camera off and see how you've done. Yeah, that's much better. So that's it, as we can see, a fair bit of preparation does pay off sometimes. Give it a go yourself. Bye now.